Saturday, just me and Totoro as per usual, mommy, and ignore the uh, bins and boxes back there. I'm quote, packing to move. <laughs> uh, I call it my sustainable packing here. You all know I don't like use towels on my body, but I do happen to have quite a few bathroom towels, many of which are, many of which have been inadvertently bleached by year, years of benzoyl peroxide use. Um, and so I just keep them for um, sustainable move, sustainable packing. Uh, they're good for packing up uh, dishes uh, and cushioning them. And uh, they're, they're just useful for a variety of things, uh, aside from, aside from uh, rubbing off all the moisture off of your skin. But anyways, what is going on this morning? I'm still, you guys, I'm sorry. I love that Color Science Mineral Tinted Shield. I know it's pretty expensive, but I've just really been enjoying it paired with the Altruist. I love that combination. Many of you keep asking me about uh, layering mineral and chemical sunscreens. Um, I'll talk more about that in another vlog um, at some point, kind of more formally, but just understand that it's really a mostly of concern theoretically for layering mineral sunscreens over American chemical sunscreens. And to be more specific, mineral sunscreens over American sunscreens that contain avabenzone as their ingredient, because if it's a combination sunscreen and there's zinc titanium in there, then there's unlikely to be avabenzone. So if that confuses you, if your sunscreen, if your base layer sunscreen has avabenzone and it's American sunscreen, there is a theoretical chance that if you put some mineral makeups on over it, that it could accelerate the degradation of avabenzone. Theoretical. However, if your sunscreens are Japanese, European, or from any other country outside of the United States, chances are there are better filters in there for UVA aside from avabenzone that further stabilize avabenzone and make this an irrelevant issue, such as with layering the altruist and, and the color science mineral shield. But confusing, confusing point aside, uh, what can I update you all on? Oh, my outfit of the day? Let me just get a little sip of toast. My outfit today is um, it's sponsored by Costco, 32 degrees, including my underwear. Everything I'm wearing right now is, is is Costco. And by sponsored, I mean I sponsor them because I'm always in there buying stuff from them. Uh, but this is that shirt that I like and my little 32 degree joggers. My socks are also from Costco. Puma. I got these, I don't know, a while back. I love these for running. They really last. They really last. You know, I find with running socks that um, just the frictional forces put a lot of wear and tear on the uh, on the ball and sole components of the sock. I mean, I don't darn sock, so I go through them. And these have held up for a long time, a long time. So yeah, and my underwear, like I said, is also from Costco, but I won't be showing you that. Uh, so yeah, move over Nordstrom, because inside the club, every day is an anniversary sale. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Costco clothes and feeds me. That and the Kosari. Speaking of Kosari, last night I, um, I've i really been just enjoying that Kosari. I mean, like I've said, it doesn't, it, there's really nothing that I consume that doesn't come from Costco and then by way of the Kosari uh, become cooked and, and made edible for me. But last night I used the slow cooker feature. Remember I told you last week I figured out how to use the slow cooker. Um, I didn't figure out, but I, I, I started using, I mean, it's pretty easy. You just hit the slow cooker button. Anyways, there is a soup that I've always made, kind of a soup weeknight summer recipe that I enjoy making in my slow cooker that I've made in other vlogs before. It's like a, um, it's almost like, I call it chop suey because it kind of tastes like, it has a, a flavor of Chinese food just by virtue of Americanized Chinese food, just by virtue of the types of vegetables that I put in it. But it came out really good. 
But yeah, I use that, um, first I use that tofu from Costco. I enjoy that stuff, it's so convenient. I call it my convenience meal. My one problem with it, I mean, it's a pretty first world problem. I, I find it's hard to get the little plastic film off. Um, but, so I kind of use a, 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 a knife to, to peel that off. Just quickly drain off the water. It comes out, it's, it's extra firm. You can see how, how nice and, and firm that is. And then, you know, the package is like four and a half servings, but one serving um, is like only 70 calories. So I actually end up divvying it into three servings. And I just press out some of the excess water with, um, with a towel, with a clean towel. Um, I just, uh, it, I find that when you cut it, some water squeegees out and makes a mess. So first I do that. Uh, some people actually freeze their tofu and they, or you guys have commented that you do that. I've never done that before. But anyways, yeah, usually I just take it out, drain the water, squeegee the water out and cut it into thirds. And then I save the other two thirds for, for other meals. Um, because like I said, one serving of the four and a half servings is kind of like a wimpy, wimpy color density, so I just bump it up to three, you know. So that, that equates to like 100 calories or something, and maybe 10 grams of protein. Anyways, and then I just get fancy and cut it, cut the tofu like into, um, into uh, four pieces one way, and then I cut it in half, so I get eight little pieces. Throw those directly into the kosari there. Yeah, so the cauliflower that I got at the grocery store, the whole head, um, I just have been keeping it in that bowl. I Earlier this week I chopped off the base of it, but I'm too lazy to actually cut off the pieces, so I just pull them off with my hands and it works well. I also had half a sweet potato that I chopped up and threw in there. I don't peel, peel it in this case. And then I threw in a cup of water. And I don't use vegetable broth. I, I mean, that's one thing I stopped buying a, a while ago. Um, instead, I just put in some of these coconut aminos. Um, they have a much better salinity profile than just straight up canned broth or box broth. And I also threw, this is a key ingredient, the celery rib. It really gives it a distinct I don't know, sort of chop suey flavor. It really, I mean, you would be surprised. Celery is like basically water, right? But it, just that one celery rib really, I don't know, flavors it strongly. I also put in a zucchini because those are everywhere this time of year. I mean, um, I cut it in half lengthwise and then I cut the two halves in into quarters and then just dice it up roughly and throw the whole thing in there. It's a pretty high water content vegetable, so yeah. Throw all that into the kosari and then I put it on the slow cooker setting uh, for in the medium, medium range. That's going to stay slow cooking for... Um, Six, six hours at 200 Fahrenheit, but I only left it in there for an hour. Um, so while I went to the gym, and then right before I got ready to, I guess I left it in an hour and a half, but right before I got ready to eat, I threw in some of that Savoy cabbage, let it cook in there really quickly for about two minutes. That stuff cooks up really quickly. But you can see it came out really good. Like all the veggies are kind of the perfect doneness. The sweet potato is just right. And oh yeah, you guessed it. I ate it out of that three and a half quarter bowl that I stored the, uh, stored the, uh, that I stored the cauliflower in because <laughs> Who wants to wash another bowl? This is one of those bachelorette little things, you know, when you live alone, you get away with doing weird stuff like, like this, but it's like, why should I get out another bowl, dirty it, and wash two bowls? I mean, a bowl storing cauliflower is basically clean. Uh, so, I know, it's weird, uh, but yeah. And TG for for my classy pal, though, keeping, keeping me classy. But yeah, that's what I had for dinner last night. It comes out really good, tastes, Tastes kind of like Asian chop suey almost. It has a really good flavor, but anyways, my mom is on her way, so pick me up. We're gonna run some errands, and that is what is going on. Drinking out of your water bowl. You have a good workout? Did you have a good workout? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Now I'm getting my hydration in. I'm getting in my, my hydration. I need to log that on my, on my Fitbit. My, my doggy Fitbit. Well, hey guys, I'm here at my mom's. Just 
chit-chatting with Ty B. Where'd you go? She always does that. She always disappears right when I turn the camera on. And then I go to ask her something, and it's like, I'm talking to space. But I'm gonna get a beverage. Let's just come in here. Check out the coloring job, guys. What a nice job. There you are. Hi, everybody. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. You look nice. You got lavender. I'm sure everybody's waiting for an update on the TARDIS since you're, you're our, of the two of us, you're the makeup expert. What did you think? Well, one moment I'll, I'll go get it so I can explain it more thoroughly. All right. You know, in case you all were, in case you all were considering purchasing the TARDIS, I think it's only fair to, to give you a one week post, post update. Have you been using it? How many times? I used it one time. One time. Because um, it's the TARDIS Pro Glow. Okay. And anyone who knows, um, which I am not, I was thinking these were eyeshadow colors. That's what I thought too. But guess what? They're really nice uh, face uh, bronzing and sculpting uh -huh. colors. And um, that looks like so a lipstick, yesterday, though. It's a creamy one, so I used it as an eyeshadow base yeah. yesterday. And then I put, um, I think I put this on. Okay. No, this one. Oh, the stunner. And it stayed on all day as eyeshadow. Oh wow! But I'm kind of embarrassed to admit, I thought these were eyeshadows. I did too. Um, and then when I opened it, I thought, wow, they really give a lot for eyeshadow. Well, this looks like a uh, this looks like a lip balm to me. No, it's it's a bit. It's for sculpting. Ooh, it you smells. Know, oh, it smells good. Do those lines. It smells like chocolate. Yeah, it does. It smells like chocolate. Ooh. Yeah, it does smell good. So they're really, really nice. It's Will just you uh, do a, um, a swatching? Yeah, if you want me to. It's just I don't do any face sculpting. It's beyond me. Your face is sculpted. Oh, face. yeah, I know. What so color is that? That's shade? Yeah, that's the creamy thing. This is... What color this is, is that? sculpt. This is what you're supposed to define with? Now, sculpt is also kind of a cream base. Feel it. Yeah. It's not a powder. I don't want to stick my finger in. No, it's not your, nice that I'm. Anything. Well, it's yours. Ooh, that one's. Sh this one's really is, pretty. That is. That's stunner. You have a more hypopigmented area. Let's try the. <laughs> let's try your thinner eminence. Flip your hand over. This this area here maybe is that a better? Do your How wrist. About here? Yeah, do your wrist. Okay, so here's the. And then I'll go this way. Wow, that's that nice. one's very pretty. I like that. What is mm -hmm. that? Strobe? Yeah, or it's lit? this top one. Lit. Okay, so we have shade, or is this is this shade or sculpt? Yeah, this is sculpt. This one. Shade, fire, lit. Those are pretty. I can do the other. I don't know. I, I can tell just by how they go on that I, I could not tolerate that for two seconds on my face. <laughs> but I yeah, imagine I for people who are used to wearing them, they're very nice. When you touch this, it, it makes me want to eat them. Powder. <laughs> but it sure is nice. The high performance naturals. So I just um, sat down to do to work some of my planner, and I made a little bit of progress. I wanted to show you all because you were asking how I lay out my. I mentioned a few a few weeks ago that I keep track of all of my expenses. It's a habit that I developed many many years ago, and have never given up. And I find it to be very useful, despite despite whatever financial situation you may find yourself in. It's always incredibly useful to have a sense of what you're spending money on. And uh, and what you're and, and where you're not saving, <laughs> and where you're not where what high yield things you, you could be using your money for. So, anyways, I'll just show you kind of how I lay it out because I'm gonna I'm actually gonna fill it in. I do it usually at the end of the month. Um, I fill it in, and I do so. I do it by going. I just go online to my bank and look at all of my spending from the electronic record and uh, categorize it in that way. 
All right, so here are the categories that I have, and I've used these um, little masking stickers. I got these on Amazon a long time ago. I'll see if I can't find them and list them down below. They come in this little tin, and they're very useful. Um, each, each thing has like a few strips of a different dimension, and then there are these dots at the bottom as well. Very handy. Um, I've had them for a long time, and I've not even come close to using them up. Anyways, I'm using them here. Remember I told you all that I'm gonna use the notes page at the beginning of each month in the EC to, to do this. But these are the categories. I have expenses here with an E and then I is basically income. I, um, you know, if you're salaried, you kind of already know this. Although surprisingly, most people don't know what their, their monthly income is. Like they have no concept. If you just ask them, they really don't know. Um, but I also track uh, if I get like an Ebates check, an Ebates rebate in, just this kind of little extra. Um, or, you know, I, I cash in and I bought a um, rebate and then I, I just track it here. In the expense category, these are just the, the categories of expenses I tend to have. Um, I have home, which is my rent and um, like my renter's insurance. Not very many things, but with the move and everything this month, I have more home related expenses than I typically do. Auto is pretty much just my gas and my car insurance. Um, fortunately, I don't have car payments. If you're trying to get out of debt, it, um, I think getting rid of a car payment is is a, is a high priority. Um, but And then health is um, just basically like if I buy anything that, that uh, could be considered a health expense, like contact lenses. Food is my largest category of spending. This is all my, my groceries and if we go to Whole Foods or if I eat out, I just document it here. And that's really where the majority of my daily spending goes is food. Media is, um, you know, like any fees associated with um, some of my um, internet kind of subscription things. I put that there. Work, I this is actually one of the most important categories because I spend a fair amount of money on work and subsequently get reimbursed for that or and or, and or am able to put it into my, my income tax deductions at the end of the year. And I find that by writing down what I've spent on work-related things, it helps me keep track of what I need to be reimbursed for and um, that kind of thing. And then miscellaneous is pretty much anything else, which would be uh, kind of personal luxury type things or gifts. Um, this varies, it's usually, usually pretty, pretty small. Um, and then the big one at the end is N. So your E minus I. <laughs> and when that's, you know, when that, that should be positive, ideally, never negative. <laughs> it should be positive. And whatever, whatever you end up positive from, from aggressive saving and being minimalist, well, then you can put that into more high, high yield savings accounts. So just about more effective, effective money management. I could track my... I have some like weekly things that I should try and accomplish each week. And one of them, I'll just share with you all. One of them is kind of here in this notebook. It's, I call it CME or my education notebook. <laughs> um, you make a commitment to lifelong learning. And that's really what, one of the things that I love the most about medicine is that there's always something to learn. There's always something to, to know. There's always something to study and you never know. Never know everything, and the more you know, the better decision maker you are. Um, and it just uh, is so requires you to be very self motivated and and dedicated to that. So I try and do what I call an hour. You know, when I was a, a medical student, a resident was my entire life was edu was studying. But now, you know, it's very hard to fit that in unless you make time for it, and it's essential to make time for it. So I try and do an hour a week of CME, um, whether that be something that is for actual formal credit, um, I'm required to have so many credits a year, or if it's just just something that I, I do for myself. And it's not just, you know, I'm continuously looking stuff up, reading articles on the fly, there's a lot of on the go learning, but um, I find that just taking some quiet time for an hour dedicated to read about something that I don't see every day, that I haven't thought about in a long time, very important. So I, and I'm somebody who takes notes when I read things. Um, I know a lot of people do these kinds of things electronically, but I just, 
yeah something about writing it, it just puts things in my brain better so <laughs> you can see <laughs> these are notes that I've just been taking over really the past past few months here um, so I have quite a few some of this is stuff that you know again I don't ever see this is my most recent recent article I read about <laughs> this disease set of diseases and I took some notes and I just will look at these bullet points later and just looking at my own handwriting and bullet points sometimes it will help me remember those little those little memorizable facts a little bit more easily so, yeah that's just kind of some of my little little uh journaling slash learning things i thought i should do this is a mole scheme what are you doing surfing the interwebs just having a little coffee and surfing away you're having uh it smells good it smells like hazelnut yeah this is the last of the hazelnut instance it is good yeah it smells I, good i um put some cashew nut milk in it and mm -hmm. that stuff is really good as a it's as nest a creamer. it's nest taster's choice hazelnut yes these tasters tasters choice i love their decaf their decaf sticks are really yeah, good their decaf is good. i only drink decaf in the evening slash late afternoon for sleep hygiene purposes because i love the taste of coffee so much well we're about to have a little lunch you made this very glamorous uh, <laughs> girl in the dragon tattoo reminiscent sandwich here open face sandwich they're always eating open face sandwiches in the, those books yeah i've been trying wanting to have some tomatoes this summer mm. so i got the tomato and it's just got hummus underneath with red onion and, and spinach. spinach and roasted bell pepper and this is some type this of this is some german rye bread i bought at the kroger just because it looked good it comes yeah. like in this brick uh -huh. wrapped up so we'll see. I've never had it before. Cool. Tidy. Are you having your usual? I'm having a salad. I just put, a, this is just one of those baggy salads with some carrots, a little bit of hummus, some mushrooms, bell peppers, tomato, and then I put some almonds in Mrs. Dash and apple cider vinegar. And I will probably drown it in the nutritional yeast. This is the bread, mm -hmm. the Mestemacher. Mr. Marker, how do you say that? I don't know. I wouldn't even try. <laughs> Comment below. You like it? Yeah, it's really quite it's good. tasty. I won't show you now because you're mid chew, but it sounds good. Um, I think it would be exceptionally tasty if you toasted it because it's got little seeds in it. Ooh. It's actually better than Ezekiel bread. I've never had Ezekiel bread, but it's, <clears throat> it's not quite as. Um, this looks pretty good. Ideal for cholesterol dry. conscious diet. Freshly ground in our own mill from whole grain. No preservatives. Also delicious when toasted. Just out walking Tybee a little bit. It's, it's pretty nice. It's actually kind of cool. Don't you agree? Yeah. It's not the least bit hot. You're excited to be out here. He's always excited. That's his perpetual state. Yeah, he uh, he likes to be outside. Smart dog. <laughs> okay. What's in your chocolate? But anyways, guys, I'm going to conclude the vlog here. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen, sunscreen and, and subscribe. subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Tybee. Say bye. I'm occupied.